All right, and as far as I know, we are recording. All right, so yeah, welcome back, everybody. Um, we made it through all of that stuff. Yeah, why is dark mode so hard for places to set up? I mean, I thought it was just, you know, change your color scheme. Give me a second more. Um. All right, awesome. Um, so sounds like people are doing pretty well. Um, hope you had a good break. Um, and welcome to CSE 222. So, um, Canvas is up and running as of last night, and there are a number of um, timely things up there. There's a, um, an online quiz that I would like you to take today. There's an ODP posted, which is due tomorrow. There's a homework assignment posted, which is due on Wednesday. These are mostly hello worlds. They're mostly just kind of getting into the system, making sure that, you know, you have access to Canvas, that you know how to do an ODP, that kind of stuff. Um, today will probably be some review for, um, for a lot of you. So if you've taken 224, you've probably seen, um, the stuff that we're going to go over, um, at least the beginning of today. I want to basically run through, um, getting into the Linux server, um, sending me email for the first homework, um, using the assessment system and, and things like that. So, um... So we'll, we'll run through that. Um, let me fire up the syllabus. As usual, I don't want to read this word for word. But let me just highlight a few things. All right, so 222 data structures. Um, so this is, you know, uh, as you know, the sequel to um, to 224, and it's going to be no Bash programming. You can use Bash to make your life easier in this course, but um, but you know the the real point of this is um, you know to learn uh, data structures, how information is organized inside the memory of a system, how we um, how we uh, dynamically allocate memory and manipulate it and free it and so on and so forth. Um, I do not remember my keyboard shortcut for setting a topic, so I'll just just do it over here. Um, I'll just do that for now. Um, so so open source textbook as usual. You can you can find that here. Um, there's a lot of information available online about data structures and the stuff we're doing is, is in most cases, you know, decades old, um, the concepts of linked lists and, and trees and stuff go back, you know, uh, a number of decades. So you don't need, you know, the latest, greatest textbook on this, but you know, a C textbook will be useful. If you still have your C primer, that's good. If you happen to have Kernighan and Ritchie, that's that's probably superior. Um, we'll probably do these topics, although maybe in a different order, and we'll probably do some other stuff as well. But these are, are kind of the minimum that we plan to go through. And, you know, here's the course outcomes. Um, 
and the usual assessment through exams and, and um, online quizzes, ODPs, larger programming assignments, a few smaller programming assignments. Um, so this is, this is largely boilerplate. We went through this in 224. Take a look at this, make sure that, that um, you know, there's no surprises in here. Let me talk about um, course policies in particular. So here's the good stuff. Um, so assessment, um, probably five large-scale programming assignments about a week each, 20% of your grade. Uh, ODPs, 15%. Um, quizzes through Canvas, 10%. Midterm is 20, final is 25. And we will be doing a service learning project for 10%. I mentioned that at the end of 224. So hopefully you've had a chance to think about that. If not, um, you can do that in the next few days. And we'll talk about the SLP um, later on today. Uh, you can read through your keys to success. These are, are nothing new. You heard me talk about these in 224. Um, main points from here, though, right? Try to come to every class, okay? It's really important to be here. Um, and try to participate. I'd like people to, to take their microphones off mute and, and you know, engage in conversation during the course. Um, it will make things more interesting, okay? Um, bugs are your friend. You're going to be writing a lot of code. It's going to be low-level code. Good chance that some of your code will not work the first try, right? When you get to that situation, please don't delete your code and start over. Use it as an opportunity to dig down into your code, to do some debugging, to try to figure out what your code is doing, and then how to correct it. That's going to be worth a whole lot more than just changing your code at random until it works and getting your, your 20 points or whatever on the assignment, right? Um, so same as 224, try to work on the command line, right? Stay away from, from, uh, from uh, you know, IDEs and syntax um, correcting uh, editors and things like that. Um, you don't have to squash bugs. You can just, like, put them aside, you know? Um, All right, um, so yeah, oh, there you go, okay, so yeah, the host is a uh, username at linux.engrcs.com. We're going to go through a login in a minute, um, especially for people who, who haven't uh, been here before. All right, um, so getting help, um, and I don't know if I, yeah, okay, this is updated. Um, so getting help, your absolute best first way to get help should be in class, okay? We have 50 minutes a day, five days a week. There's, there's wiggle room in my, my lecture plans, right? Ask questions during class, right? Almost guaranteed, unless your question is something like, you know, why did you write this on my test, right? You, good chance your question is, is something that would be relevant to everybody else in the class or other people in the class. So ask for help during class. Ask questions, things that aren't clear, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's your absolute first go-to. Second best way to get help is come to office hours. I have one hour of office hours a day, 8.45 to 9.45 a.m. So it's right before this class. Um, but you're going to be competing with people from all of my classes and with people who are coming in for advising. So asking questions in class is your absolute best bet, right? This class time is dedicated to you. Um, we've got 15 people right now. We should have a few more than that in the class. But, you know, um, we can make this as interactive as, as you like. Um, so first choice, ask in class. Second choice, um, come to office hours. Third choice, you can try emailing me. New policy for this quarter, I'm only checking email once a day, and that's going to be in the morning around office hours. So if you write me at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm probably not even going to see that email until the next morning. So you don't want to write me and say, hey, I don't understand um, what we're supposed to do for this thing that you went over in class, right? Ask for it in class. Oh, we got murder hornets in the chat window. This is this is not good. Hopefully, there's no like murder hornets in your code. Um, that would be a great error message from the C compiler, though. Murder hornet detected at line 17. Uh, there's a Discord server, so um, you know, same uh, server as as last time. But there's also an invite on Canvas. But if you're already on there, you don't need to do the invite. Um, We'll go through Linux login in a few minutes. We'll talk a little bit about Git. Um, most people in here were in 224, so so I'm assuming that you're comfortable with Git. If you're not, um, go ahead and watch these videos, right? Which will which will 
give you the basic overview of how to do Git, and then and then send me an email, okay? Um, or come to office hours, right? Um, or ask in class. Um, attendance, I'll be recording attendance. I'm not going to be doing anything with it at this point, um, but I will be noting it. Um, academic honesty, late work, all that stuff is boilerplate. Go ahead and read that, right? Basically, do your own work. Make sure it's your own work. Don't look at other work when you're writing code because you can't unsee something that you've seen and you'll end up writing code that's basically derivative of somebody else's work and that can get into all kinds of problems. Um, turn works in on time. I'll show you a grading rubric for your first assignment which includes um, you know, the penalty for turning it in late and so on and so forth. Um, any questions along the way, any of this stuff, anything else, right? Just go ahead and, and, um, and shout out. Um, turn your mic on and just just ask, um, and we'll keep things pretty casual. All right, uh, let's let's go over logging in to the server. So um, you can get into the server if you're on a Unix machine, and I recommend being on a Unix machine. And there's there's um, some videos on on how to you know set up a virtual box if you don't have a machine that boots into Unix um, or if you have a machine that runs Unix right just go from there if you have OSX you can you can do an SSH from there if you're on a Windows machine and you only have Windows access you can use something like Putty to get into um, a Unix system um, so um, let's let's go ahead and log into the server. So remember your your username is um, you know if your name is John Smith, then your username is J Smith. There's no punctuation. There's no period between the J and the Smith. There's no number after it. It is not your CTC link login. It is not your your um, your login from 121, okay? It's just first initial followed by last name. And then it's at linux.engrcs.com. So I'm gonna SSH, I'm gonna do my username, nmacias, at linux.engrcs.com. And it's gonna ask you for a password. It's not going to show you your password when you type, so you have to type it in and have faith that you're typing it in correctly. So if you have a new account, and there's a few people who are new in here, your um, your password is, you know, CTC link ID followed by an underscore. So if my CTC link ID was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then that would be my password. Right, 10 characters total, CTC link ID followed by an underscore. So, um, so let's go ahead and log in. And if I got the password correct, I see this login message, right? So there's the welcome message and so on. Um, and then I have to change my password, okay? First thing it's going to want is my current password. So the password I just typed, I have to type that in again. If I get that wrong, it's going to complain. It's going to say, um, you know, password unchanged. Okay. If that happens, log in again. Put in your current password, CDC link ID, followed by an underscore. Try again. Okay. It wants your current password again. So put in your current password. Now it wants a new password. And it wants it twice. And if you don't type it in correctly, it says passwords do not match, password unchanged. Okay? Anytime it comes back with this message, your password has not been changed. So now if you try to log in again, don't use your new password. Use your old password, CTC link ID followed by an underscore, and try again. Okay? Put in your new password, put it in again exactly the same. Oh, I messed up. All right. All right, so put in your current password again, then put in your new password, and then put in your new password again. And now it says password updated successfully, and you're logged out. 
So now log in again, and you should be able to use your new password if you type it correctly. All right, and then you go. You're golden. All right, so that's the lowdown on, on Unix access. Um, and if you get locked out or something like that, um, let me know. Okay, I lied. I will check emails, um, but I won't respond to them more than once a day. Unless it's something really, really urgent, like um, I can't get logged into the Linux server. So, first few days, I'll check my email more. So, yeah, send me an email if, if, uh, if you can't get logged in. Um, all right, so that's Linux access. Um, let's talk about the ODPs. So let me bring the zoom over. And down here under one day programs, there's um, using the automated assessment system. So, um, so that takes you to a video that basically runs you through what we're about to do right now. So let's look at ODP 201. So ODP should be open right now. Um, they should open at 10 in the morning and then close at 10 the next morning. So let me double check. Um, so yeah, we're up and running. Um, all right, so let's take a look at ODP um, 201. So like I say, this is a hello world basically. So, so if you're new to this, ODP is the idea of an ODP is it's a 24-hour programming assignment. And it should be testing something that you either already know how to do or have just learned how to do. Which means it should be a pretty quick hit if you're, if you're playing along, if you're following what's going on, what we're talking about. It's a, a kind of, you know, checking in um, with your level of understanding. And if, if you're still following, you know, what we're doing... It shouldn't take a long time to do an ODP. Once you understand, you know, how to use a system, it can take, you know, two or three minutes to do one of these things. Um, but if you don't understand, you know, the underlying concepts um, or, you know, you don't know how to compile a program on a Linux system or things like that, right, these can take a long time. Um, so it's, it's sort of, you know, helping you stay on track from day to day. And they don't come up every day but there'll be a few of them a week usually um, so so ODP 201 this is just your initial sort of hello world test um, and usually these write-ups will be on the Linux server but the first one or two I'll put them inside um, canvas as well so what does it say for ODP 201 write a function named sum which accepts two integer arguments and returns their sum as an integer so here's a prototype for the function it's called sum, it takes two integers, it returns an int. And there's a test bed under slash temp called main.o. I can't swear that's there right now. It's been a few days since I set it up. Okay, so, so what do you want to do? You want to write a function called, um, you know, sum. Um, I'm calling it sum.c here. You want to test it and make sure it works. And then you want to assess it with the system to see if it does in fact work. Um, so, so here's the command we're going to use to assess this, right? We're going to take your sum.c, we're going to compile it and link it with the test bed, which is main.o. We're going to make an executable file called odp201. And then when you want to assess it, you're going to say assess odp201 sum.c. All right. Um, so let's, let's do this. So I'm logged in as N Macias. Let me write a sum.c. Alright, so I've I'm logged in as as a fictitious version of myself, so I have syntax highlighting on here. Um so so there's my prototype function, right? Um takes two integers x and y and returns their sum. Okay, so that's sum.c. I want to test this myself, so I'm going to make a function called main.c. And I'm going to go ahead and include standard IO. I'm going to prototype my function. 
I'm not going to write comments, but I should. Um, and there's a one-line test program. I'm going to call my sum function with arguments 2 and 3. I'm going to print out what it returns next to a line that just says 2 plus 3 equals. And I'm really hoping this prints out 2 plus 3 equals 5. If it doesn't, then my sum function is broken. But, you know, um, I've got some faith. All right, now I'm not using the test bed yet. I'm just compiling code that I've written. So I'm listing, you know, sum.c, main.c. I'm putting the output in main. I'll compile that up. I forgot to tell it main's an int. That's okay. Let's go ahead and run this. And it tells me 2 plus 3 equals 5. Okay, good so far. Um, So, you know, when you write these things, you want to do more than one test. Okay, so our sum function is pretty straightforward, right? But, you know, if this is something more complex, don't just do one test. It works. Okay, everything is great. Exercise your code. Spend a lot of time this quarter coming up with test cases, thinking about where are the edges in my code. What things could I possibly have forgotten to handle? Right? What parts of my code was I a little unsure about? I've got something that traverses a linked list, but what if the linked list is empty? Will my code work correctly then? Put all those things into your test cases. Right? And it's, it's an art form. It's, it's a, a developed skill to come up with good test cases. Right? But this is really important because once you're good at coming up with test cases, in your brain, you'll be coming up with those cases while you're developing the code itself. And as you're writing, you know, a while loop, some part of your brain will kick in and say, hey, you know, what if that number is negative? Is this while loop going to work? And you'll be like, oh, yeah, I need to, you know, put in this extra if statement up, up here. So it'll actually help you be better and more successful at writing code itself. All right, so let's compile this. Let's run this. Hey, it looks good. Okay. I've got three test cases. I had negative numbers. I should try some zeros, but I'm pretty sure my sum function is good. So let's go ahead and assess this. So I'm just going to follow the instructions um, from the assessment assignment, which says, you know, link in the test bed from slash temp, link in my sum.c ODP201. I'm not using main.c anymore, right? I can't assess main because main is my test program. I have to assess the, the assignments test program, which is slash temp slash main dot o. Okay, it compiled fine. Um, I'm gonna assess ODP 201 and sum dot c. And I got two commands basically, g to submit my, system, my code for grading and x to exit. So I'll hit g and it comes out and ran five tests. I got 10 out of 10 on each, I'm done. Hit an X to exit. Done with the ODP for today. All right. So you're welcome to mimic that verbatim, right? And and um, you know the goal here is not to be able to write the sum function. The goal is to get through all these steps for for um, for doing this. Um, when you do your assessment, right? Um, make sure it says you know you're about to assess your code for, make sure this is what you were expecting. If it says you're about to assess your code for ODP 207 and you're writing code for 201, don't submit it for assessment, right? Just use an X to get out of there. So make sure that, that you know, you're not submitting too early or too late. So ODPs will open at 10 in the morning. They'll close at 10 the next morning. I did it at 10 so that, you know, absolute last chance. If you really, really need help, you can try to catch me during office hours before the ODP closes. But that's really risky, right? Because it's, you know, 75 minutes before the assignment closes and, you know, who knows how long it'll take to get in to, um, to the Zoom room during office hours. So um, what I would like you to do is, you know, when I post an ODP, we'll go over it in class. I'll tell you any things that I think are helpful in doing it. You should really, really at that moment be thinking, how am I going to write this code? 
and you should have a really clear idea in your heads how to do this ODP before class ends. And if you don't, you should try to figure out a question or two to ask to help clarify that. Right? And this is another skill that's really useful in programming when you're tackling a new project. The first thing you want, first thing I want to do is, is get sort of a high level, you know, 40,000 foot view. How am I going to do this? What are the major pieces? What are, what are the, the, the top level, you know, input process output? Um, or however I think of it. Um, and then, you know, I'm not going to be thinking about, well, what am I going to call this variable? Or, or will I use an if statement or, or you know, an if else or, or something? I'm not thinking that level, right? I'm thinking very, very high level. What are the basic steps here? And in trying to think of, of your solution at that level, that will help you know if you understand the problem or not. Right? That will that will be the point where it's like, wait a minute, what are we supposed to do in this case? Right? Or what does this thing mean that the assignment says? So try to spend um, you know, a minute when we're going through the ODP in class thinking about how you're going to do it. So that hopefully you can expose any questions you're gonna run into and then ask them, you know, right then while we're talking about it. All right, so that's ODPs, that's ODP 201. Let's talk about homework one. So homework one, it's a 20 pointer, it's due on Wednesday. I'm giving you two days for this one. Um, because it takes a little more setup. All right, so this is basically getting up to speed on Git. So if, if you, again, if you did 224, you should be fine on this. This is the exact same assignment you did, in fact, for I think your second homework in 224. Um, if you're new to this, if you're not familiar with Git, come and talk to me. Okay, well, go through this, go through the video, and then come and talk to me with questions, and we can work through this um, together. But basically, this is a, a synopsis of how you start a new project and put it under Git control. Okay, you want to be doing this on Linux, you can do this on the Linux server, everything is set up there, um, and that's what these instructions are writ written for. Um, so this will let you basically create a directory named homework001, put it under Git control, Create a repository on GitLab, and if you don't have a GitLab account, definitely go through the video, set up a GitLab account, um, and this will this will make a clone um, of your repository on GitLab. Okay, all of this stuff gets done once per project. Okay, um, and then um, as you're working on a project, right? Every time you create a file or modify a file, you need to put it in your repository. So, um, so in this case, we're creating a README file, and just put a line in here, just tell me who you are, tell me what your experience is with Git, whatever you want to put in there. And then um, copy your sum.c into this directory, just so you have a file in there. I don't care if it works or not, right? So basically, you want two files in this directory, a README and a sum.c. Okay, add them to your repository, git add, git add. Um, Push those changes in um, with git commit, and then push them over to, um, to GitLab with git push origin master. Okay, this will set up a repository on GitLab named homework001. Okay, and then um, one time per project, hop onto the GitLab website and set me up as a reporter. Okay, so look for my username, Nick Macias, and it's not Nick Macias 3, it's just Nick Macias. Add me as a reporter. Um, and then I can download your project and, um, and grade it. The last thing you have to do is send me an email, and I want your email to have nothing in it except a subject, okay? And the subject should be git colon followed by your GitLab username. All right, so um, let's run through really quickly how you send email to me on the server. Um, All right, so I want to send send mail. So my my username on the server is um, 
is just Nick. Everybody else, it's first initial, last name. But for me, it's just Nick, because I don't know. All right, so how do you send me mail? Um, mail space Nick. Okay, subject, here's where you say git colon, and you put in your git ID. And then um, just hit a control D or hit a period followed by enter. Okay, easiest option is probably control D. There you go. And it'll say, you know, end of text, and it'll say null message body, hope that's okay. That's perfectly okay. Okay, that's what you want. Your other option is, um, you know, just hit a period as the first character on a line followed by an enter. That'll also say I'm done with my message. Now, in general, don't use this to send me email, okay? <coughs> um, it doesn't record a history that's, that's, you know, official and so on and so forth. But, but there's, you know, a good chance that I'll see your message um, eventually. But um, it's easier for me to have all of your Git user IDs available on the Linux server, right, instead of having to download them from an email system and so on. So for this one assignment only, right, I need you to do this. And you need to do this even if you took 224 and I already have your GitLab ID because I'm scratching all of that information. I'm starting a whole new list of, of GitLab IDs. So part of homework one, you got to send me this me email message. Okay. Uh, let's see, we've got 20 minutes left. Um, yeah, let's go through Git really quickly. Um, so let's... Um, so I'm not going through... Um, how to set up a GitLab account and how to set up the um, the SSH key pair and all of that kind of stuff. That's all in the video, um, and we can talk about that offline if if that's new to you. But assuming that you know you've you've done Git before and you have an account at GitLab, right? Let's just go through um, the steps for homework one. So I'm going to make a um, a directory. I'm going to make a readme. I'm going to copy my sum.c into here. So now I have two files in my directory. Okay. I'm going to say git init, which is going to create an empty repository. Okay. And then I'm going to do this magic line, git remote origin add git at gitlab.com colon username. And then homework zero zero one dot git. But I gotta do it right. Yeah, dot dot works great for that. <laughs> Let's you get a, a file from a parent directory. All right, so git remote add origin, git at gitlab.com, colon, your GitLab ID, slash, and the name of the repository. Okay, um, so that creates a link to, um, to this repository on GitLab. Um, all right, so yeah, to email me a username, just type email Nick, just type mail Nick, right? All right, so, um, so we've got a repository, um, so git add... And I'm just going to add everything because I only have two files in here. So git add git commit, and it will ask you to. Um, oh, I'm a new user. Okay. Let me do this differently. I don't have anything set up for that Nick and Macias account. So we'll do this from here. Um, so I'll say git init. And 
git remote at origin git at gitlab.com nick macias slash homework zero zero one dot git um, I'll do git add star I'll do git commit I'll put in a commit message um, And then git push origin master, and that will actually push it over to GitLab. All right, so now that's over there. Um, and then hop onto the website, um, go under uh, members, and add me as a reporter. Which I could do now, but I'd have to figure out my password. Um, all right. That's homework one. Um, quiz one. Quiz one is a slam dunk. So what course are you currently sitting in? I guess I should say when yeah, you could be taking Scuba 101 and doing this quiz during there, so I guess that could be a problem, but um, but you're in CSE 222. All right, so um, so yeah, go ahead and um, do that quiz. That is due, I think, tomorrow. Um, yeah, January 5th. So, um, and pay attention to the, the times on these if you, if you cut things to the wire, um, because some of them are 8 o'clock, some of them are class time, some of them are midnight. Um, so be careful with that. All right, let's talk about service learning projects. Um, so as I mentioned in 224, there's there's a service learning ba uh, basket, right? Service learning project um, component 222 and 223. So it's at this point a two quarter long project um, of your own choosing that you get to decide what you want to work on, submit a proposal, and then work on it. Um, Izad and I will try to figure out some form of presentation at the end of the quarter. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to have to be virtual. Um, but some way where people can share what they've done with other people, at least in the class. Um, and, you know, see what people are doing, tell people what you've done, and so on and so forth. Um, this is, this is a, a um, really cool component to the course, okay? Projects are, are so key. Um, hopefully, you know, you spend the rest of your lives doing fun projects. Um, I broke into so many fun projects over a break, and I'm, like, deep in the middle of some of them still. Um, this, is, this is cool stuff, right? This is where I spent all of my time and brain power when I was an undergrad, just working on my own projects and projects with friends. And, you know, we went to class and we did homework and when we had to, we'd study for a test. But mostly, we were working on things, right? And, and that's, you know, the stuff that you're going to spend the most energy on is the stuff that you're most interested in. And this is, this is a, a piece of the course that you get to choose what you're going to do for it, okay? So, you want to learn more about doing video game development. You want to learn how to make Android apps. You want to figure out what the big deal is with Arduinos and how to interface hardware. You want to automate your home. You want something that feeds your, your plants water automatically. Um, whatever you're into, right, we can turn this into a service learning project. Um, oh, cool, yeah. Yeah, so so a biobot that moves off of brain waves, right? That was a project that, that um, somebody worked on a few years ago. Um, all kinds of things. So if we were in the STEM building, right, I'd tell you to walk down the hallway, um, down the hall from the collaboratorium. You could see posters hanging on the wall of all the past work that students have done. Um, you can see some uh, references to this if you go to um, engrcs.com. So come in here and come under tools, uh, let's see, ECS club, and down here, um, da, 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 da. Um, project documentation, sample of past student projects. 
So click on that and it'll take you to a YouTube channel and here's here's just some uh, SLPs that students have done that they agreed to um, to let us upload onto YouTube. So these are just, you know, example projects, um, self-aligning headlight, um, electric penny board, power factory, um, utility drone, pick micro USB interface, right? So you can get an idea of, of projects that people have done um, in the past, but you know, Anything that you're into, there's a good chance we can turn it into a viable SLP. Um, okay, so how does this work out? Um, oh, cool, awesome. Um, there's a um, proposal, and the deadline for this is January 13th. Okay, so so coming up um, a week from Wednesday, I believe. Um, and there's there's instructions for doing this. And I don't want you to just take this document and just add a few lines to it. Okay, what I want you to do is use this as, as a guideline, a set of instructions for um, how to craft your, your proposal. So um, rehash of what we just talked about, right, what the basic idea of an SLP is. Choosing a topic. Choose something you want to work on. Okay, something that you can really get excited about. Something that you're going to have to force yourself to put aside when it's time to go to class, right? That would be the ideal. Um, so spend some time thinking about this. Shoot me a note if you're not sure what you wanna work on, if you've got an idea. I already got some notes from people over break and we kicked around some ideas so um, we can iterate on this. And then once you think you've got an idea, go ahead and write a proposal, okay? And I'd like you to include these pieces of information. Okay, but don't just take this and, and, you know, scribble in a sentence or two after this. Write this like a proposal, okay? Write this like something you're going to take to a bank and say, you know, I want funding for my business idea. Here's my idea, right? And this is what you're going to hand them. Um, so, so you should include the following information, right? Your name, CSE 222, the date, um, name of your project if you have one. Um, people you want to work with. So you can have groups of up to three people. All right. But be really careful about, about deciding to work with people. I've had, you know, so many cases where someone decides they're going to work with, you know, somebody else. And six weeks later, they say, I can't get a hold of this person. They haven't done their part. Um, I don't know what to do. Right. Well, you send them an email. Well, I don't have their email. I've never actually met them. Right. So make sure if you're going to work with someone that you have, you know, a good understanding of expectations, uh, you know how to get a hold of each other, you have similar thoughts on the timeline, right? If you're planning to do this a little bit each week and they're planning to do it all week nine, make sure you understand that up front, right? Um, so part of the idea of, of this project is to get some practice with group work, okay? If you're working in a group or to get it out, practice with, with project planning in general. Right, dealing with timelines. Well, I was going to do this, and then COVID hit, and I couldn't order stuff from Amazon anymore. So what do you do about that? Right? I couldn't get together with this person because we were quarantined. Um, I was going to work on this this idea, and then I realized there was a whole lot more I needed to learn. And I don't have time for it. Right? So how do you deal with these contingencies? This is real life stuff. So so. Um, it's not just, you know, my project is to make X and then, you know, 25 weeks later, here's X. Okay, that's great, but that's just a part of it. It's the process of how you got there. Um, and, and um, you know, how you managed the project along the way, how you tracked it, how you adjusted to, to changes in your schedule and so on and so forth. All right. Um, project description. Tell me about your project. This should be a lot more than one sentence. Okay. Um, each of these could be a paragraph. This could be multiple paragraphs. Spill it all out. Tell me everything you're thinking about this, right? If you're excited about it, this is going to go on and on and on. Um, so just, you know, tell me your project idea. Um, most challenging elements, expected learning outcomes. This should not be something you know how to do. Okay, you should be trying to do something that you don't know how to do. That's how you learn. That's how you have fun. Um, so, you know... Um, you want to, you know, build a gaming console using a Raspberry Pi. Well, I've never used a Raspberry Pi. I don't know anything about gaming. I don't know anything about electronics, 
right? And I'm told I have to do it in Java, but I have to learn Java first. And so, you know, what are the challenges here? Um, service components, so this is supposed to be some sort of project that's, you know, useful or, or you know, um, a service to other people, that's usually pretty easy to, to figure out for pretty much anything, but think about it, right? So, um, and put on your marketing hat, right? So how would you pitch this to, to say, a venture capitalist who wants to, you know, give money to somebody who's going to come up with something interesting and useful to people? So how would you market it? Um, if this is something that you've already started working on, um, talk about your past progress and, and where you're at right now. Um, current status of the project. For many of you, this will be a brand new project, but it could be that you know you've got something you've been working on anyway, and you want to turn it into an SLP, or it could be that you know you took 224 um, last year and started an SLP there, and you're continuing it. Um, so just kind of let me know the current status. Um, milestones. So I want very specific milestones. So what's a milestone? When you're walking down the road and you've traveled a mile, there's a piece of stone, a post coming out of the side of the path that says, you know, 15 miles, right? It lets you know where you are. So we create milestones on projects so that we can say, you know, how far along are we? So for example, by the middle of this term, you should have a milestone. Um, you should define a milestone that says by the middle of this term, Here's what I should have done, right? And these have to be specific. They have to be measurable. So you can't say by midterm I'd like to be, you know, good, uh, good amount through my project, and by the end of the term I'd like to, um, you know, have a first version done. Well, that's that's a starting point. But how do you know at the end of the term if you've got a first version done? What is a first version? Let's say you're making a video game. What's a first version of the video game? What is reasonable progress for the mid part? Do you want to have you know something that that renders the basic game board? Um, do you want to be able to move around a character? Do you want to be able to have the character do certain interactions? How many interactions? Do you want to have um, computer controlled characters? Um, do you want to have multiple levels? How many levels? What level of detail? What kind of artwork? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Okay. So so these have to be very specific. They have to be things that you and I can look at at the midterm point and say you met this milestone or you did not meet this milestone. And you use these to adjust your progress, to adjust your rate, and possibly to adjust your overall goals. Um, all right, major challenges anticipated and plans for addressing them. Again, you should be doing something you don't know how to do already, so you should be pushing yourself. So what are the challenges you expect and how are you going to deal with them? And then just kind of, you know, tell me why you chose this project, how it relates to your interests, things like that, and what you hope to learn from this, and how you think it'll benefit your education. Okay, so I'm not worried about the format of this. I'm not worried about the style of it, but I want good content. Okay, I want to see a lot of thought going into what you write for each of these pieces. Again, if you turn in one page, it's probably not going to get a good grade. Okay, this is really your plan for the project. This is where you put down all the details and you start working out some of those those detailed aspects. So spend some time on this. And if you want to send this to me, you know, this week and say, hey, how does this look? You can do that. If you send it to me the day before it's due and say, can you look at this? Probably not. Okay, but if you get started on this early, you can go ahead and send it to me and I can iterate it with you. All right, we are out of time. We are out of, of introductory topics. So we will leave it there. Tomorrow we will start talking about data structures. Um, all right, have a good one. I will see you next time. Thanks.